Hello, my name is Jane Pierce. My business is Tara Jane, and I'm here to talk to you about astrology today. Specifically, I want to talk about four slow-moving large planets that have a big impact on all of us. And they're a unique group of planets. These are the four planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, that exist between two asteroid belts, one that lies outside of the orbit of Mars and one that lies outside the orbit of Neptune. These four planets, they have some powerful and I think mythic roles in our lives, more than we have energy that goes in the personal that we get with the sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. These four planets are giving us big, long moving, slow approaches. As a matter of fact, let me tell you what their uh, time that take to make a revolution is. Jupiter takes 12 years and it's about 13 months in each sign. Saturn takes around two and a half years, which is 28 to 30 years to go around. Uranus takes seven years in a sign and it's 84 years to go all the way around. Neptune takes 14 years in a sign and 165 years to go around the sun. So these slow moving planets have big impacts on us. And the energy that they bring to us is more the energy of what we do in a community than what we do in our personal lives. Let me talk some now about the stories first with Jupiter. Jupiter is named for the king of the gods, for Zeus. He is wisdom and luck. There's abundance, growth, and most importantly, hope. This idea that the world is expanding and that life is improving. And we go to Jupiter and get this benefic gifts. Jupiter is one of the benefic planets. We call it the greater benefic. And its gifts are unending. And that's part of its problem. Saturn comes to say every gift has got to end. And if Jupiter is full of hope, Saturn brings stark reality to us. Saturn is conservative. It's often seen as father time. It is the ravages that time brings us all, the reality we have to face, the facts of the matter. Where Jupiter offers us hope for the better future, Saturn forces us to look at the past and be in reality. And that gift of reality and structure is what allows everything to have form, but it also takes away some of the hope, some of the possibilities. Saturn can easily strangle things with the limits and the sense of be here now, look at the past, and that's all we have to count on. But of course, Saturn isn't the end. Uranus is the rebel, a trickster that says, I'm going to break Saturn's rules. If Jupiter gives us hope and expansion and Saturn locks us down into reality, Uranus reminds us that reality can be strange, that the trickster comes, the rebel, Prometheus, who says, I will recreate the world. Because Uranus is inviting us all to find something shocking, some rebellion that says, this isn't how reality has to be. And as a matter of fact, Saturn, looking at the past, does not necessarily give us truth about the future. Of course, Saturn and Uranus agree that there are facts that give us the truth. And Neptune does not. Neptune shares more of the hope of Jupiter. It is water and chaos and dreams and mysticism. It is an invitation to a personal divine experience, the numinous reality of having a connection with the meaningful, purposeful divine. And that is anything but factual. It is hopeful, but it is not clear. It is not determined. Its very definition in the Neptunian world is the vagueness. And so Neptune is like the expanse of the ocean where how do you draw a solid line that Saturn so clearly loves and Uranus loves because they like to break it? Neptune instead says, ah, it's vague. It's hard exactly to see. It is the, the chaos of the primordial waters. It is the inability to pin down a specific divine experience, the numinous reality of mysticism that says, well, it depends on how you look at it. And so we have these four 
powerful planets moving slowly through our lives. And in their slow and certain growth, we have different perspectives that each of us incorporates, not only in our birth chart, since each of us has a particular relationship to the forces of hope and growth or reality and limits, to the idea of breaking the rules of Uranus or the variety and very diffuse dreams that may border on madness that is Neptune. Each of us has a way of approaching that energy. And also, right now in time, there is also a challenge that looks at what does our society right now call for from us? What is Jupiter and its benefic growth bringing us? It has such wisdom, such hope, and Saturn has a colder, maybe more understanding than wisdom by looking at the past. It certainly holds a knowledge and structure. And it's right now doing it in a really hard place. And so we are looking at these opposing energies, this Jupiter that grows and Saturn that brings us down to hard, cold reality. We're looking at Uranus who breaks through that cold reality and says, surprise, this truth is stranger than fiction. And then Neptune says, but let's get lost in the fiction because it isn't that fiction and that story in that mythos of who we are and how we believe that we get our meaning and purpose. One of the things I find fascinating about these four planets is how much their origins tell us about what they're doing in our lives. Jupiter and Saturn, along with the closer in planets, are part of what we call the traditional planets. They're all planets that can be seen by the human eye, although not easily, they can be looked at without a telescope. And they were all that we knew existed until the 1700s. When Uranus was discovered, it was in a time of chaos and rebellion. The American Revolution, the French Revolution was happening. It was the early 1780s, 1781. It was when Herschel Williams discovered this planet saying, I think there's more here. The first person to acknowledge that there were more planets than what we had known through the visible eye for aeons. And so Uranus embodies that energy of what American revolution is. It is the best and the worst of revolution. It is on its good side, Uranus asking, why not me? Why do I have to follow these rules? Why not? Why can't everyone have this power, even if I've never had it before? Why not me? And then its darker side, Uranus says, why me? Why this randomness? What broke what I could have expected? How did this snowstorm come when no one thought it would? How did this pandemic show up when it was not expected? And so Uranus as a rebel, as a revolutionary, embodies so much of the American spirit and is often tied with American history because it was discovered when Uranus was in Gemini. And so the American chart has Uranus in Gemini. And we're about to come back there. So expect us to have some shocking revolutionary fighting for freedom that we have gotten in America every time Uranus has been in Gemini. It was the American Revolution the first time it was discovered. It was the Civil War in the mid-1800s. The next time it returned to Gemini, it was World War II. The next time it Gemini found Uranus present in it. And finally, we're coming up on it. What powerful transformative rebellion will America face as Uranus moves into Gemini in the next couple of years. This energy of upset, of change, is so important to who we are, even though it has both a positive and a negative side. We all want to be special. And yet this idea that everybody's special, everybody's above average, is a lie that Uranus tells each of us and then pushes us to see who will make that I will be unique and above average different. Who will be able to rise to that? Uranus is the one planet that people argue that its name and its mythos doesn't match its story. 
Richard Tarnas and many others argue that it should have been called Prometheus because it involves that energy of recreating. If you know the story of Prometheus, he is said to have recreated the human race after they were wiped out in a deluge. And he stole fire from the gods to empower those tools. Uranus is often tied in with electricity, as we were just discovering electricity and Benjamin Franklin and his lightning bolt experiments are part of that Uranus energy that we bring. And that here in America, we have strong. And are we breaking the rules? Are we finding our truth? Or are we just making chaos? Because the hard part of Uranus says, I wonder why this happened to me. The possibilities, the randomness, the fact that truth is stranger than fiction has led to an existential crisis where Americans are saying, what's the purpose? What's the meaning? Why me? Why did this pandemic happen to me? So your Uranus invites you both to break the rules and to find the gift and the surprises, as well as challenges you to reconcile what does those surprises mean? And how do I find meaning when I can't predict the world? And my life. Well, Neptune holds that answer. Neptune says there isn't an answer, there's a story. There is more in the mythos, in the deep well of the possible, of the visionary, of the mystic that brings to us. And Neptune in its vagueness is so reflected in its discovery. Well, technically, Neptune was discovered in 1846, and it's around the time of the Great Awakening and the personal mysticism that we found here in America. That's actually not the first time that Neptune was recorded. Looking back in history, Galileo, just coincidentally, because that's what Neptune does, is it takes meaning out of coincidence. It is the planet of synchronicity and mysticism. Coincidentally, when Galileo was looking at the stars, Neptune had stationed retrograde near Jupiter. And so he's looking at the moons of Jupiter and drawing what he sees. He marks down a dot, a tiny little dot that was Neptune, that for that one brief time, when it was conjunct Jupiter, was able to be seen with the naked eye. But Galileo knew that planets move and stars don't. And since Neptune was stationing retrograde and not seeming to move, he did not think it was a planet. Of course, living in that Saturnian solid world, it never occurred to Galileo that the thousands of years of the planets we knew, there could be more out there. And so in the writings that we have of Galileo, we can see a couple times that he drew this dot that now in retrospect, we know is Neptune, but he didn't know what he saw. And so the next time, people started to suppose that Neptune existed without yet having a name for it. it. was in the 1820s. Somebody calculated that there could be a planet affecting Uranus's orbit and so wrote to the head of the Royal Astronomy in England. And the astronomer said, I'm interested, tell me more. But the letter that he wrote detailing where to look for it was never sent. Accurate, pretty close, but never delivered. And 20 years later, somebody else does the same calculations, happens to send their letter to the same guy who's still the head of the Royal Astronomy Society in England. And then people start looking and find Neptune. So Neptune in its vagueness says, who, who found me first? Who gets credit? And the answer is, well, it depends on what you consider finding. The first to record it, well, I guess that's Galileo, but he didn't know it. The first to say it was going to be there, then that's 20 years before we finally got around to writing it down and seeing it at the same time. And that very vagueness of the letter not sent still in the guy's archives from the 1820s is just that vagueness that Neptune causes us all to be awash in. And so where you have Neptune, you have mysticism, you have hope but you have madness and chaos. There is no clear answer in Neptune in the vast primordial chaotic waters that Neptune represents or the vastness of space that is almost like an oceanic world that is swimming with what we are not quite sure what it is. 
I hope these stories about Jupiter and Saturn, about Uranus and Neptune, help you feel that instead of these planets or rocks in the sky, they are instead a part of the stories that we as members of the Western culture have been shaped by our thoughts and what we think is possible. And so I hope in a Jupiterian sense that you have growth from this conversation and that you continue to grow, finding wisdom and abundance in how these planets help you. I hope Saturn gives you the stark reality of what is true and can be measured and limits that we find that allow us to operate sanely. But I hope there's a little bit of rebel, a little bit of Uranus there who can break what we think is possible. And Neptune, who says, bring your story, bring your myth and your mysticism. And with those four slow-moving planets, I hope you look at your own chart and see what their relationships are with each other and with yourself. Where do those basic human experiences live in you? And where are they living right now in the sky? I'll come back and tell you another story about planets sometime soon. And I look forward to your comments and ask you to let me know what you want to know about now. I hope you have a wonderful day.